Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is now time for round 3 of our MotoGP career mode and it is time for the circuit of the Americas. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be starting from our best possible position. We'll be starting in pole position. Ladies and gentlemen, full send here in the circuit of the Americas. So here we go then, in the US of A, starting from pole position. We will wait for the lights to disappear, and away we go. Ooh, not the best of starts there. A little bit hesitant upon the acceleration, and then went a little bit aggressively to try to catch up. But into the left-hand side, then really good effort though to try and take some positions. Who went down there? Someone went down in the early stages of the race here. Did not see who it was. You might have to rewind that to find out who it was, because I... Didn't see it, unfortunately. It, it went so quickly, I couldn't really work out who it was. I was so far down. Look at him, like, look at him, Vinales. Just, oh, 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 you have to be so brave to go through there because it's so simple, so easy to make contact and end up losing their front. As wow, Maverick Vinales goes in deep and he's gone down. The championship leader has been it. So he's going to be the championship leader for the first time since 2018, oh, 17, 2019. Probably 18, I would say. I don't remember since Maverick Vinales was the last championship leader, but that classic turn three move there as we then go up at the inside of turn 11 for Nia but that turn three or turn four, whatever it is, for Maverick Vinales straight through on the inside, drops the front. We've seen it so many times before here in MotoGP 23. So, of course, five laps here of, this, of the uh, Circuit of the Americas sprint. Not a very long distance in terms of laps, but uh, the laps itself are a good two minutes long or 159 I managed in the qualifying so bit of engagement with uh, an Bastini so far keeping us honest but we are still very much on it running power sitting three then pretty much for the entirety of this sprint I don't know how well it'll go with the final sect here because if you cast your minds back when we were on the KTM the Ducatis absolutely blitzed us into sector four and I tell you what the worst possible person to have behind us in the circuit of the Americas is Mark Marquez. He loves these anti-clockwise circuits and now he's right behind us. The man on board the Repsol Honda is closing in. Fun fact for you ladies and gentlemen, the Repsol Honda looks pretty good actually at this season and in terms of team comparison. Maybe the Honda will return back to form before we move over to MotoGP 24. Into turn one, Marquez is still within range, but not close enough for a lunge. The AI do struggle going into turn six, seven, and eight in a moment. So into turn three, turn four, they mess that up. That's a track limit warning for me. They struggle there in four and five, but then here, of course, exactly as I mentioned a moment ago, this is turn six, and then into turn seven, they usually launch a silly attack there, just what we've seen with Maverick Vinales. So the gap might, it has increased, it's up to seven tenths. They lost three tenths just because of that corner alone. Absolutely bonkers the way they tack that corner with such aggression. And Johan Zarco's just gone down. Not sure where he went. But he has dropped it in the parameter. Ducati's no longer in the top ten. Take a look at that on the left hand side of your screen. Count the Ducati's in the top eight. Two. Look at that. I thought this was the Ducati Cup. Myself in the uh, top position. Marquez second. Vassalini, Espargo, Mir, Quattrara, Binder and Oliveira. What a bizarre top eight as it stands as I say though the team comparison the, the other bikes the Japanese manufacturers and then the KTM and the Aprilia's are looking really solid the Ducati seems to be going backwards they've had some bad results the past couple of days apart from Johan Zarco doing really well in the Argentina sprint of course so as it stands we have pulled out 1.6 seconds are we doing the Mark Marquez here in the Marquez track it looks very much like it. 1.6 is the advantage. I cannot believe this. Didn't think this Ducati would be this powerful to be helping us find a, min a second per lap. We couldn't dream of getting in the 159s when the, uh, with the KTM. I don't believe it happened, but across the line, it's a two minute flat. Almost a 159 in the race session. Unbelievable. Well, this is sprint, but you get my point. <laughs> it's still extremely impressive. Wow. Oh, the gap has come down again, though, but I think it's going to uh, even itself out, because, of course, it's very misleading around this track. It, it, 
it just bounces up and down, it oscillates from a good advantage to a concerning advantage to then uh, back up to a nice strong lead again. But into the left hander then, this is turn 7, let's take a look at that gap in a moment, 1.4, 1.6, 1.7, Alicia Spargo has gone down, that's the second Aprilia to drop the front going into turn 7, you can just see it in the graphic in the bottom left corner of your screen, he was right there in the midst of battle, and then unfortunately dropped the front, God bless the USA it was at last time, I don't know what the title will be this time, because it's pure jubilation here in the conquest for Kota. Fantastic. 2.3 seconds, it is the lead. That's marvellous. With a capital M. Absolutely amazing. It's honestly amazing the difference with the power of this bike. Because with the KTM, I was on the limit all and every single time. Just pushing with gritted teeth, wondering why I can't keep up with the AI. Doing lap times such as like 201s and 2s. I don't think we even got into the two minutes, honestly. Let alone getting a two minute flat with the KTM last season. The difference is night and day. It's unbelievable. But considering on the team comparison, it's just a small little sort of chunk of being slower than the Ducati. Yet it, it feels miles off. This is an unbelievable feeling. It's just riding with ease and just enjoying the experience rather than that, as I say, gritted teeth, finishing every race exhausted and full of sweat. This is a complete different feeling, it really is. And I hope you guys are enjoying this one, because uh, we're going to be looking at a sprint victory in Kota, I think. Unless Enea Bastini can pull something out of the hat here, I don't see him attacking us. Into the part where the AI struggle. Beautiful apex is there, Marquez is now into third, so Bastini is now taking second. Quattararo has just moved up the order a little bit. He's up to fourth. Would be great to see a Yamaha back in the podium for the first time. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my God. The absolute commentary curse. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I can't believe that. I actually can't believe it. How? Where did he bin it? I don't think... Oh, and now Oliveira's gone down. Oh, it's all gone heck to handbasket. I tell you what. Something to pay attention to here. Look at the size of the gap. Not just from myself to Bastianini and Marquez, but the gap from them to Mia. What has happened there? Why is there such a huge gap amongst the two Repsol Hondas? I'm beginning to wonder if it was Jack Miller who crashed in the first couple of corners. Because I'm pretty certain he qualified really well here today. Possibly on the front row. And I haven't seen him anywhere near the top eight since the beginning of the video. No way he's crashed again, surely not. Of course, you guys probably know the answer to this, and you're probably already screaming at the screen saying, no, no, it, this person crashed, or yes, it was Jack Miller. I'm going to have to find out at the end of the race. I can't believe that. I can't believe Fabio crashed, crashed a minute ago, but I'll tell you what, this could be a 1 minute 59 in the race here into the left hand side, wait for the acceleration, be patient, be passionate, across the line, a 159.968, a deviation no more than a tenth of a second over the past three laps. Amazing, we now have a 3.3 second advantage. The best thing we ever did with this Ducati was reduce the power, because that has completely slowed down in Air Bastanini. I might be mad in thinking that, and it could just be pure coincidence. But I'm pretty certain that if we both choose a bike, it, it affects us both. So if he picks a bike with loads of power, etc., and we pick, and we have that sort of uh, improvement for the tests, then surely I would have the same sort of power. But since we reduced the power, and yet we're, we're not struggling because this is what we were used to last season with the KTM. We had more, uh, we had the power. It's just we couldn't have the acceleration. But now we have that acceleration. It seems to be doing us massive favors. Yet to an Air Bastini, it's not doing him any good at all. He's in second, but that's only nine points, and bear in mind, he also didn't finish in the Argentina race. I unfortunately crashed out of that one, but when I retired and went to the main menu retired, he crashed out as well at some point, so the pair of us didn't acquire a single point in the, sec in the actual race of Argentina in round two. But of course, the sprint race was very successful for us. We got a fourth place, our best result ever 
in Argentina. I think um, we might have had a victory in Moto3, but counting more so the Premier Class. It, it's been incredible so far with this Factory Ducati, it really has. It's a little bit of a shame to think that you can't win until you get the Factory Ducati, because of course, may I remind you, I am still playing on 120% difficulty. No deviation from this difficulty since Moto3. I don't think we changed it once in Moto2, and we certainly didn't change it in MotoGP either. But ladies and gentlemen, one more corner to go, and this will be... Oh, big wheelie! <laughs> I wanted to try and get a decent wheelie, but not like that. Almost killed myself, almost went full Max Biaggi. So confirmation on your screens right now. We did take the victory by three and a half seconds. Just looking at those lap times, those are really slow. Those are slower than last season. Well, bizarre. I guess we'll find out what they're going to be like in the race, but they were significantly slower in the sprint, and we have taken over top spot in the World Championship. So let's defend it now for the race here in Kota. So here we go then, girls and boys. We will start from pole position once more. This time it's a bit sunnier, and this time we hope to get a good start. I even increased the track control, and it still didn't work out well. Goodness me, that wasn't ideal, was it? But into the left-hand side, then up on the inside of Bastini. Look at this. Oh, what a, that's beautiful. Bit of contact there with the two Aprilias, and Jack Miller is in the lead as we now go around the outside of Alicia Spargo. Will Jack Miller crash again? Will Vinales crash again? I guess we're about to find out. Up through one of them, up through the next. Can we get through? It's going to be tight to scythe our way through here. Almost. Do we invite him in for a lunge into turn seven? He takes it. Does he go down? Oh, he doesn't. Well played, Jack. Well played. That's usually a recipe for disaster, as we've seen earlier on numerous times in the sprint. But here in the race, Jack Miller keeping it together on lap. Number one, Bastini's down to sixth place, and so not the best of starts from the Beast. Luca Marini in the top seven. Quattro, of course, after the commentary curse in the sprint, he's back up into eighth place. I'll tell you something that's just piqued my interest there. Look at that championship lead. That's the difference maker of these races, isn't it? Oh, Vinales is now taking... Oh, no, that's Anea Bastini. Apologies, I was uh, looking, assuming that was against Maverick Vinales, but uh, against Anea Bastini, this is the last opportunity for us to fight for team leader as well. She's going to take three races, and I tell you what, after seeing the difference in Argentina, if he hadn't have crashed, this could be going right down to the wire. So this is actually really interesting here, because we're battling for Ducati supremacy here. We should not only be the conqueror of Qatar, oh, excuse me, of Cota, we should be the conqueror of the Ducati team as well. What a dream to be the manufacturer leader. And from there, we can take the pace with the, the, the development. I haven't done that yet since the gas gas. And to be honest, if I cast my mind back, we had the absolutely horrendous version of the RC16 with the gas gas. So I imagine uh, it's probably not going to go too well if I am the, the lead developer. But we'll see how it goes within the testing in Jerez in a couple of videos' time. Of course, we will have to do the race in Jerez, which I'm very much looking forward to. I'm hoping that will be just as wild as as fun-packed as it was in the last season's battle. Because, of course, that's where Anir Bastini took me out. I got pushed off wide going into uh, turn 8, I think it was. And then from there, we had to do the big comeback to fight back and take the perfect 25 championship points. Will it be the same in Jerez in a few days' time? I guess you're going to have to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. And then, then you can find out by watching the video. So into the left-hand side then, did go for the hard front, medium rear, good solid combination around the circuit of the Americas, and to be honest, even with the reduction in fuel, this one looks like it's going to be a cakewalk. Miller in second and Maverick Vinales in third, though that hasn't changed. And they don't seem to be making as many mistakes or crashing like they were doing in the sprint. Seemed relatively effortless, I'm, I'm beginning to push a little bit more. And Aya Bastion has now moved up to the top four, so our championship advantage to teammate Anaya has reduced. Not by much, but just by two or three points, so something to bear in mind, because if he does get on the podium, that uh, advantage will begin to disappear. Oh my god! What my clumsy thumbs and fingers! I downshifted to first. I haven't done that in ages. Oh, Lord Almighty. I completely got... Oh. I just need to calm down for a second. My god. I got myself so distracted then. 
It's so easy to do. I... <laughs> oh my god, right, 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 okay. Okay, so... When I use the tackle that combination of corners, I upshift to third gear, move into the right hand and then drop to second as we turn into the left hand side there. I didn't upshift to third. So, when I went on to second gear then, I think that was down to first. I, I, I thought I had done. That's why I was so surprised and I assumed I'd just tapped it too many times, but now I think about it, I don't think I did upshift because it went straight to one and I only tapped it once. Blooming heck. Well, I think Davide Tardotzi and everyone else behind us are going to have uh, a bit of the heart rate monitor will be through the roof now. Shout out to the days when I used to wear the heart rate monitor for these Moda GP career mode videos. I would say I don't really get that intense anymore. I do with the commentary, but to be honest, my my heart rate doesn't really increase as much as it used to. I'm, I'm rather content and quite comfortable with fighting now with the aces and with the uh, with the riders in the in the career mode. It used to be a stage where I was just really intense. I mean, I still am intense, the commentary certainly is. But uh, my heart rate used to be off the chart sometimes. I think in this very same track, in Moda 3 and maybe Moda GP 22 career mode, it got to 180. And I was that nervous because it was a thrilling fight. And the reason I always got nervous was the fact that if it's a good video, then I'm intense and I really want this video to work well. But here, for example, I need to talk and see to make sure we get it right here, we don't drop down, so there's the, sec there's the third gear, back down to second gear, yeah, I feel confident now, <laughs> that's much better, a 1.6 second improvement, oh wow, oh well, wow, that would be one hell of an improvement, okay, it was a bit misleading, but we should actually still, with power setting 2, get a 159 here, and this feels absolutely effortless, I can't believe this, into the final corner then, Bring it in nice and tight to the apex to the left hander for turn 20. And we're going to get on the power. No wheelie. Look how beautiful that is. Across the line, a 159.7. Unbelievable. We're, we're not to be beaten here in Kota. Not a chance. We're going full send for the American ace. Potato, no doubt, will be in the comment section somewhere. The Dots Race mechanic, pit crew member. He will be ready for this one. He'll be chuffed if we're going to be getting a win here in the Circuit Americas. I don't know how he feels about this particular track, but it is his home circuit, so doing it for the Aces, doing it for Potato, doing it for everyone, right here, right now. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you do want to become a Dr. Ace channel member, you can do so with a link down in the description below. You can have your name put on the end of the video when I go, oh hi, in the outro. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you ever watch that far enough, you can uh, have your name at the end of that video if you want to. So anyway, onto the power then. We're looking pretty much solid here. Three seconds clear from Jack Miller, the number 43. Vinales, Bastianini, Marini, Aspargaro, Marquez and Quattro are still very much the same status quo from the lap prior. Still with a 28 championship point lead and still looking at possibly an improvement on the lap time. I'll take it. If we can get another 159, I would be very, very pleased. This is certainly a track that benefits from using Power Setting 2 more than Power Setting 3. If you wanted the ultimate lap time, I assume you would use Power Setting 3 for all of the long straights, there's quite a few. But ultimately, I'm not looking for that much better lap times here. Just as long as I can stay consistent, keep the same rhythm, keep the tyres nice and comfortable and just keep them optimal for uh, just in case anything happens, I think we should be good. But to be honest, I've got to say, I used to really dislike the circuit of the Americas, but things have changed. I'm beginning to really, really begin to enjoy the circuit. And I think having races like this where you feel comfortable, you feel confident, you're enjoying it, it just adds to the experience. So across the line, it's going to be another 159. It's a 159.7 yet again. Back to back, brilliant lap times. I am thrilled to bits. I did talk about earlier on the, uh, the, the heart rate thing. I wanted to just finish off before I continued. My point was that uh, I get rather intense when making videos because if it's good, it means that you guys get to enjoy it. And if I end up ruining it, like breaking or maybe like in Sepang, for example, last season, it was a great race. It was thrilling in t encounters with an Air Bastini, a proper ding dong of a battle. And then I binned it. It basically ruins the video at that point. Everything was great until that point, And that's then when you feel the pressure. So that's why you get, at least I get really intense with it because I know how important it is to still make a good video and I think 
I remember getting rather frustrated when we did the Ride 5 Cups because we constantly kept having bad races due to the bad connection and a lot of riders taking each other out. I was the culprit of getting taken out so many times. I was not, not the culprit, sorry, I was the victim of getting hit so many times. And uh, it begun to really ruin the experience for me and uh, because I knew the videos would not be worth watching as such. So, yeah, that's basically the point I was trying to make with uh, the digression I made earlier in the commentary. But anyway, back to business. Back to the focus of today's point of view, of the objective. And we are still cooking on gas with the Factory Ducati. I have read the comments, and there's quite a few of you say that regarding the, uh, the career mode, swapping over to the Ducati has been the best decision a lot of players have made. I read one recently where someone moved from the Grassini Ducati, went over to Factory Ducati, and the difference was absolutely night and day. So, I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you completely. The difference from this, K, uh, from this Ducati to the KTM is just head and shoulders better. Everything. Super, super bike. It's absolutely wonderful. And as you can see, demonstrating on screen right now, we probably couldn't even dream about a 159. I could probably cut all of the apexes, maybe even cut turn four and five, and I don't, still don't think I would have got a 159 with the KTM. Brilliant bike, very comfortable to ride, but it just didn't have the gumption and the oomph to get us into a spot where we really needed to be. I am a little bit worried that this could be a runaway season, but I think I read one of the comments last time where someone said basically, well, you deserve it. <laughs> I mean, oh, first track limit warning coming in there, my apologies. But yeah, I did read a comment that was saying that uh, basically, yeah, you deserve it. You've done two seasons of hard graft on the hardest difficulty. Why not let it fly with the new Factory Ducati and just take over at the front and win in dominant fashion? You know what? That is the slogan, in it? Why not let it fly? Why not just go for it? And that's exactly what we're doing here today. 6.2 seconds ahead of Jack Miller. I can't believe that. No Brad Binder in the top eight as well. Don't know what's happened to him. Of course, Jack crashed in the first race. I did manage to check after the uh, the first race. And uh, Vinales and Spargo did as well. So for the pair of them, they're right there in it for uh, some decent points. But for Vinales, he's going to have to be careful though because I don't see him as a championship pr protagonist. But for the three races we've been in so far, he has been there or thereabouts. It's something to put, have, a, have a think about. Marquez has just fell out of the top eight. Johan Zarco and the Prima Pramit Ducati. Now, the Pramit Ducati in this game is probably the most bizarre thing in my MotoGP career mode. Their team comparison was always neck and neck with the KTM, or if not better than, than the KTM. It was just a little bit less than the Aprilia. And yet, it, it never seems to be up there fighting for the race wins, unless it's a random situation. Like last time in the race, where in the wet, in uh, in Argentina, Johan Zarco was up there, and he was up there in the sprint, and then here he's barely fighting for eighth place. Really strange situation going on here. So onto the power, we did start to drop into the two minute marks, and I guess at this point, medium rear is not quite going yet. It's beginning to move, but it's not beginning to sort of slip, if that makes sense. I think there's a difference between a little bit of movement compared to slipping and sliding. I think for over the next couple of laps, we're going to start seeing it. Tire wear itself has been absolutely fantastic, though. Even though this is a very uh, abrasive, difficult, technical circuit. Oh, and Jack Miller's gone down. Oh, that's a nightmare. That's... That's not done me any favours either. It's brought an Bastinium now by a couple of extra points. And Vinales has taken, what, a further four points away from me? Thanks, Jack. Still being the perfect teammate, even though we're not together anymore. Oh, well. <laughs> Apologies, I just dumped, uh, I bumped my desk then with moving my leg. Apologies if, uh, if there was any distortion with the microphone. But yeah, the, regarding the tyre wear, look, look how clean it is. There's hardly any damage or reduction. It's well above the R on the medium rear. And it's all sort of disappearing at the same rate. Not one side is a little bit worse than the other. So it's just going incredible. I, I, I'm absolutely loving this Ducati. I had no idea it would be this much better. I really didn't. And I think I'm going to gush about this Bologna bullet for the next 18 rounds. 
Including testing, <laughs> of course. I think it's just going to be absolutely magnificent. In fact, we'll have two tests, won't we, since then, so it might be 90. But yeah, into the left-hand side. This should be another 202. It could be a 203. Across the line, have we... We have. We've stabilised a little bit. We went to a 2 minute 1. How can they compete with that? This is 120% difficulty, ladies and gentlemen. And they still can't get anywhere near us. At this point last season, we were struggling to get to fight for a point. And I think, not so necessarily a point, but to fight for a solid point. And I think I ended up getting a long lap penalty at some point. I don't remember. I've done a lot of races since then. I feel like I've done so many so quickly recently. I've started doing the Moto E as well, but... I'm not sure about the Moto E. Uh, the feedback I got wasn't exactly thrilling, so I might leave the Moto E. I've not decided yet. But also with trying to learn the factory Yamaha for the Moto GP 23 Ace Academy Cup, trying to learn the factory Ducati for this season here, and to learn the Moto E bike all at the same time is a bit much. I don't know what I was thinking when I suggested that. I feel like I can do it, but one of them's going to have to suffer. Already with the uh, the views basically being half for Moto E, and I, I get it. There's a there's a certain disconnect because of the audio with Moto E. Personally, I don't think it's that bad. I really don't. As long as I can race and have some good battles, that's all that really matter. But I, I do get it. There's a certain stigma attached to Moto E where people just reject the idea completely. So yeah, we'll see how it goes for the future. But don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Do not fear. Do not worry. The priority is our MotoGP 23 career mode. I'll still stream on Mondays for the Ace Academy Cups, but the goal is to keep on just like this, but in the MotoGP career mode. Eight seconds clear. Marquez will have to be impressed by this. Even he will be heading over to the Ducati uh, garage to give us some praise. Of course, he will be in the Ducati garage next season as far as uh, MotoGP 24 is concerned. Wouldn't it be funny, though, if... Uh, if, you, if he joins the Brasini Ducati next year's game, the rider transfer market moves him straight back to Repsol Honda. <laughs> that would be crazy. So across the line it was a 2 minute 2, so the lap time's there. A deviation of half a second. But every single one of those has been solid. This is Ducati dominance. It's going marvellous. I am overwhelmed with joy right now. And the bike just feels better and better. I can't, can't believe it. Four tenths of a second is the gap on this one though, so I think my run of form of the low minute of the low two minutes could be coming to its conclusion here. Definitely can't get into the 157s uh, 159s again. I think uh, the tire wear is destroyed now. It's not really, but it is beginning to slip. I would say for any career mode race or any race actually a mode should be 23 to, to the halfway point of the rear tyre is when you start to feel it. With the front, it's not bad, it's just a concern of crashing because the, the front end starts to really wash. But for the medium tyre, it's definitely uh, the choice for this race. I'm glad I went for it. There was an option of soft and hard, but I'm glad I went for the medium. Oh, a bit deep there for turn 12, almost running off the circuit. So that is, all that praise I was giving to myself for getting consistent lap times here has gone out the window. That's completely ruined the video, hasn't it? <laughs> that one mistake. I mean, we did have that big mistake actually earlier on, didn't we? Was that a two minute one? I think it was now I think about it. So not every single lap time has been within the 159s or low two minutes. I definitely made that mistake earlier when I downshifted to first. And with power setting two being on all the way here, could probably try and manipulate a bit with power setting three, but I don't think it's necessary. I have, I've seen some people saying you use power setting through at the end, but I don't see what's to gain. The tyres are already so worn that I can't do any better lap times anyway. So I might as well just stick as, two, as the power setting two. That's a shocking lap time. But to be honest, I think that's the lap times I was doing with the KTM. That seems eerily familiar to the lap times last season. So it's not a good lap now, but I'd be, I'd be content with that last season. <laughs> This is crazy. What a season this is going to be. I feared that I might not win the MotoGP Championship, and I still think that, you know, there's a still negative thought in the back of my head that says, you know what, we might not win it before MotoGP 24 comes out. We have till the 2nd of May, which is just over a month and a bit. So, 
I've got to be really good here and make sure that we not only get the videos done, but I also get them done in the correct way where I'm winning and being competitive. The Circuit of the Americas was always a circuit we could do well at, even in the Gas Gas. So I'm not going to get too overwrought or excited, but it's something to make, it's something to notice. Because when we go to those really difficult tracks, Magello was a bit of a lucky one last season, but the Saxon Ring, there's going to be them where it's going to be really tough. But the likes of Hereth, Catalonia, I'm just going to go all up, full out send. Aston will be easy, Red Bull Ring will be easy. Silverstone, if it doesn't rain, I think I'll do well as well. But after uh, reading the comments regarding Argentina's sprint, uh, Argentina's race in the wet, we're definitely going to reduce the... Uh, what, sorry, we're not going to reduce the difficulty, we're going to turn off the fuel wear and tyre wear because for some reason, the tyres in this game in the wet just burn so fast to the point where it's just un unrealistic. It's just bizarre. So into the final sector then. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not Mark Marquez, that is me. That's me in Cota who will take the perfect 37 points out of 37 as we cross into the final corner. Let's get another wheelie for the aces, not quite as impressive this time, but it's enough to secure happiness and jubilation here in Cota. Mario Vinales right there at the death took my fastest lap time, but anyway, it doesn't really matter about that. Any surprises on there? Binder and Marquez, Tacker in 21st, not ideal, and the championship lead is now nine points ahead of the Aprilia man. And Airbus needs him to fourth. He's got to improve sooner or later. But guys, that's pretty much it for me. So thank you very much for watching the video. I will leave you with the Teams and Constructors Championship. And upon that note, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.